Okay, so we'll continue sparse matrix uh, tutorials. And uh, over the years, we have uh, got a lot of support from different uh, funding agencies, in particular DOE, NSF, and uh, DARPA. So I started this work when I was a student of Jim Demo. So we started uh, 20 years ago. <laughs> Starting. So to get uh, some software into usable, uh, state, it's not an easy task. We, of course, we first get uh, the algorithm work, but then it took a long, long time to move into new architectures, etc. E even right now, we're still having, writing big proposal grants to continue this kind of uh, activity. So then there are a lot of uh, other peoples from uh, all different, uh, different parts of the world contribute to, to the software, different pieces. And StrongPack was mainly developed uh, at uh, Lawrence Berkeley Lab. Okay, so I'll first uh, talk about SuperU. Um, in fact, the uh, majority of the time, let's, let's say two thirds of the time, will be about SuperU because uh, the uh, underneath uh, sparse matrix uh, common data structure and uh, uh, algorithm structure is uh, very similar between the two packages. So the uh, common stuff will be uh, laid out uh, in the first half of the tutorial. For SuperLU, you can just download from the website, and then there's a user guide, uh, and also there's uh, HTML code uh, documentation. Then there's, uh, at the top level directory, there's a readme file. You can follow that to do the install installation. So in the past, in the very old days, we were just using uh, make.inc. So the users, you have to edit this file to uh, put in the C compiler libraries, uh, compiler flags, optimization, et cetera, also link with the BLAST library. And very recently, this year, we did the uh, automatic build system, which is the, we use the C build, uh, C maker build, so that will make the process uh, much more automatic. But I, we still keep these uh, two options because some users would still prefer to edit the make file so that you have a, you know, more visible uh, to you, more intuitive. So the outline of the tutorial for both uh, SuperU uh, Super and StrongPack is uh, uh, first uh, we uh, describe the what functionalities in the software, and then we talk a, a little bit about sparse data structure. It's not very intuitive. And a little bit about the background of the algorithm so that uh, when you run the code, it's not working you know, fast, uh, then you know where the different places you can look for to tune the parameters, et cetera. And then we'll give you some examples. So in sparse matrix, we're talking about a general sparse matrix from any applications. There are a lot of applications. You, in the end, you get sparse matrices. The example of sparse matrix usually is uh, dimension can be very big. Nowadays, it's very common in production level to do over a million number of uh, dimension of the matrix. But then the number of non-zeros per row usually doesn't uh, grow with a dimension. So it uh, usually stays at uh, like 10 or 100 non-zeros uh, uh, per row. For 100 non-zeros is more like for the 3D problems. But for some other application, uh, like machine learning, et cetera, some of the applications, their number of non-zeros grows with the dimension. For most of the PDE applications, number of non-zeros per row is constant. And then the major difficulty with the sparse matrix is the sparsity pattern. Some of the, them from a structural engineering design, for example, in a Boeing company, this, uh, they do the airplane design. Then they come up with, uh, uh, after discretization, you get a very well-structured uh, matrix. The pa sparsity looks very nice. You feel like uh, it's easier for you to manipulate. On the other hand, if you come from some uh, chemical engineering uh, process uh, analysis, then this matrix, uh, you can see the sparsity pattern is very irregular. So somehow you need to have a good data structure to accommodate those. And then in, ter in terms of uh, solution methods, usually people talk about uh, two big classes. One is uh, iterative methods, one is the uh, direct methods. So for iterative methods, for Kralov method, multi-grid, et cetera, the very nice thing is uh, you can simple, single out a key kernel, which is sparse matrix vector multiplication. And there are large number of papers uh, to optimize uh, this uh, routine for newer architecture, for GPU, et cetera, et cetera. The nice thing is uh, you focus on this and very 
often you get a very good uh, efficient implementation. And the good thing about uh, this class of algorithm is uh, their uh, arithmetic complexity is low. For example, like uh, Rob Fargo was saying for multigrid, when it works, uh, it, you can achieve linear time complexity. But for difficult numerical problems, uh, they may not converge. So that's the difficult part. And direct methods is very different. You factor the matrix. So that means uh, A matrix is actually modified into a L and U factor. It's uh, very hard to parallelize. So there are very strong data dependency, et cetera. Numerically, it's very robust, but it has higher arithmetic complexity. So it's not a linear time algorithm. It also requires more memory. So in modern application code, very often people use uh, direct methods to precondition iterative methods. So it's a combination of the two techniques. So for example, if you want to solve AX equals to B, instead of solving this directly, either iterative method, direct method, you find a preconditioner M inverse. This M inverse is easy to do. Then you solve this system using iterative method. The spectral uh, property is nicer, so do you speed up the convergence of iterative method. So we don't say, you know, one, way, one method is superior to the other. It's actually all useful. And because of the difficulty of writing direct solver, um, the, a lot of experts have worked on this for a long time, and there are a lot of code available for people to use. And depending on the uh, numerical property of the uh, matrix, uh, for example, if the system is as symmetric positive definite, then you can do something simpler, faster. It's Cholesky factorization. And if it's symmetric indefinite, you do the LDL transpose with a certain, prop, a certain uh, kind of uh, pivoting. For non-symmetric, do the general LU. Least square problem, you do QR. So there are a lot of uh, different uh, factorization techniques. And then, of course, uh, multiplied with uh, the different architectures. You can sequential shared memory distributed uh, and GPU enabled, et cetera. And I have uh, written a, a small survey paper about all the different uh, available software packages which you can take a look. And whenever there's a new package coming out, I try to update this uh, online uh, PDF file. So the focus of this talk is about a distributed uh, SuperLU. It's uh, relatively harder to uh, implement, to use, uh, for people to understand. And this is the one we did uh, at Berkeley with uh, uh, several other contributors. And this uh, code is accessible from PETC and Tradinos. And the distributed memory code is uh, not, there are not so many. The, the other alternatives is uh, MUMPS, which is public domain, and PASTIC. This is more SPD, symmetric positive definite, and WSMP from IBM, which is a commercial product. So the functionality of the library is, uh, of course, we do the LU factorization triangular solution. But that's not just uh, what it is. In addition to this, in order to get a very efficient uh, solver package, there are a lot of other things. So we have an incomplete uh, factorization preconditioner. We can solve transpose the system multiple right-hand side. And then the sparsity preserving is important to, to uh, make sure that you preserve your LU factor as sparse as possible. We provide uh, some of the options. And then the pivoting is a big issue, especially for non-symmetric uh, indefinite problem. If you just do the straight LU without pivoting, usually you don't get a good solution. So we have different uh, pivoting strategies. And the, you can equilibrate the system so that uh, the condition number of equilibrated system is uh, lower, which makes the uh, solution more accurate. And also important is uh, we have condition number estimation, the iterative refinement, and component-wise uh, error, uh, error bound estimates. So that tells you how accurate is the solution. Otherwise, uh, you don't have a feel of uh, uh, the quality of the solution. The software status for SuperLU, we have sequential shared memory and distributed memory. Recently, a uh, couple of years ago, we started putting CUDA uh, 
enabled uh, the uh, capability to add on top of this uh, MPI, uh, OpenMP uh, distributed memory. And we support a real complex uh, single double precision. The data structure I'll show you is the uh, compressed column or compressed row structure. We do have a, a Fortran interface. The code, everything is implemented in C. From numerical point of view, Shared memory code and sequential code, they have the same, exactly the same numerical property using partial pivoting. Distributed memory code, we use a pre-pivoting strategy, running the maximum weighted bipartite matching algorithm so that dynamically we don't do pivoting. The first thing for the user is to understand the data structure. So this is a small seven by seven sparse matrix the, those, are non, those are zeros. I only have these uh, non-zeros. The uh, compressed row storage is uh, you just uh, represent those uh, non-zeros in a big array. So this array, 1A, 2B, the different uh, rows here, right? And then you have another column index uh, corresponding to each of these non-zero. So for example, for matrix F, uh, for non-zero F here, it's the corresponding index uh, is 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. OK, so you put the column index there. But then you need another set of pointers to point to the beginning of each row. So the, the first row starts from 1. Then the second row starts from 3. So the pointer pointing to the beginning of each row. So that's the compressed row storage. You can uh, similarly imagine the, uh, the transpose case of a compressed column storage. So in this way, you can have a compact representation of only non-zeros in your data structure. And this can be extended to the distributed uh, compressed row. So this is the, uh, in SuperLU dist, the interface is, uh, we, we have matrices A and B. They are, A is a sparse matrix, so these are user needs to worry about. And LU is the internal, is the output but it's the internal data structure user do not need to see them. So the interface for the user is A matrix, B matrix here. So A matrix is divided, say, among three processors across uh, the, the whole uh, matrix here. And on each processor, you will still use a compressed row representation. B matrix is a dense matrix, so it's uh, do the similar compatible partitioning, similar like A, but it's easier, so it's a dense either dense vector or dense matrix. Distributed uh, compressed row is in addition to the uh, each local part is the same as the CSR, but then you need a little bit more, a few more indices to tell you where this local part in the global matrix. So there's uh, something called uh, this uh, M local is number of local rows. The first row is the global index of the first row on this uh, uh, matrix. And then the other three arrays is the same as the standard uh, CSR. So we can take a small example here, a uh, five by five example on two processes. So you can see on processor zero, number of non-zero local is five. And the M local, number of row local is two. And then you move on to processor one data structure. Number of non-zero is seven. M local is uh, uh, th uh, M local is uh, three, three non uh, three uh, rows. Then the first row for processor one starts from two. Okay, so, so this is using C code using zero based indexes, so zero, one, two. And then the number of non-zero value is here, column index is here, row pointer for this processor, it's starting first row is zero here, second row start from row pointer, it's from second element, from a third element, so it's index three. So that's how you build the distributed compressed row structure. And all you need from user point of view is only to input, to set up this on each process. You don't need to worry about the other you, you don't need to worry about uh, this is the internal 2D block cyclic layout for the LU factorization. So we have a uh, processes, six processes is uh, templated, uh, replicated on all these uh, global matrix. So you can see this is a process template, process template. So in this organization, when you do the LU factorization, 
you make sure that uh, load is always uh, balanced when you go down this uh, elimination process. And also you have a restric restricted uh, communication across the process row, across the process column. So that's the nice thing about uh, this uh, 2D block cyclic layout. It's the similar idea as uh, it's used uh, in scalar pack, a dense matrix package. So the, from a user point of view, even though you don't need to worry about this data structure, you do need to tell the code that you are using this 2D process grid. So either you, you organize as two by three, two by four. So the general rule is as square as possible. And if it's not possible to be a perfect square, you give the row dimension slightly smaller. So two by three is better than three by two. It's just because algorithm-wise, along this dimension, there's more communication. So you want a slightly fewer processors here. And the reason we talk about this process grid is one of the good usage pattern is to use this as a block Jacobi preconditioner. So for example, here you have a big matrix. You are solving this sparse matrix using GMRES uh, iterative methods. But then you want to use diagonal block to invert the diagonal block to build your preconditioner. So this is called a block Jacobi preconditioner. And then you can use, because your matrix could be, could be huge, 100 million by 100 million, then you can say that I want a 10 million this dimension, use a direct solver to, to do this inversion, use a super LU dist. So the way to do that is you can say I'm using setting up a super LU dist to, to do this block, and another super LU dist instance to do the second block, another one to do the third block. So you have a set up this as a two-level parallelism. And each of these block, each of the super LU dist, is using a different uh, communicator. The, in the library term is the different uh, grid, grid in it. So then the way we set up this is uh, for the general use, if you want to use a process, just the one instance of a super LU dist, you just call super LU grid init, which gives you zero to p minus one processes is to solve this uh, one problem. But then the more general use is uh, you can say super LU grid map, which means uh, at the user map, you give the process number, the physical process number from 11 to 16 in this case. And this uh, user map is mapped into internal library. Internal library will do logically from zero to five. So, so, so that's how you set up uh, running different uh, process, uh, super LU grid map, you can set up uh, different uh, instances in the same application. So the, uh, just want to touch a little bit uh, upon the algorithm so that you can know that uh, when you use the package, there are a lot of uh, different phases why there's a say, symbolic factorization, ordering, etc. The sparse factorization is much more involved than dense factorization. So this uh, little cartoon shows you the uh, sparse factorization algorithm. The, you do the, uh, at each, for example, in the beginning at the, this uh, row, this column and row, you do Gauss elimination and you get uh, the second one. The, since uh, there's a non-zero, this, this guy is a zero, so the second column is actually independent from the first column because of the two zero entries here. So you can proceed this one and two simultaneously. But the interesting thing happens is uh, if you look at uh, this red dot here, because there's a non-zero here and there's a non-zero on the first row here, then this cross product will generate this uh, non-zero here. Even though at this position, this is a three, four position, in the beginning it's a zero. In your matrix A is zero but it's generated because of this uh, operation, because it's uh, multiplication update into here. So then from this little cartoon you see, you work out step by step, you can see all these uh, red, the different red dots generated. These are called a feeling, okay? And that's something in dense matrix, of course, everything, everywhere is non-zero. But in sparse matrix, you start with the very sparse matrix. But after factorization, because of the feeling, it becomes much denser. So the LU factors is usually much denser. In practice, for 2D problem, we have seen like a, a factor of 20 growth 
for 3D problem could easily go like 40 or 50, sometimes uh, depending on the matrix structure for very unstructured problem. Non-PDE problem, we have seen like a hundred of, uh, several hundred fold increase. So that's the significant uh, performance hit if uh, you get a lot of uh, feeling because you have to store those guys, you have to do operation with them. So one of the, uh, uh, okay, so, and also because of the uh, sparsity, you can actually, um, there's a very nice uh, analogy between the graph and the uh, sparse matrix uh, duality relation. So you can represent uh, these uh, sparse matrix uh, as a graph, and then you can encode all the elimination steps uh, using this uh, kind of uh, dependency graph, uh, which column depends on which other column. And this could help a uh, parallel algorithm to schedule the independent task as soon as possible. So because of this feeling, that's why in the sparse package, LU kind of package, it requires a lot of steps before it actually gets to the numerical operation. The first step is minimize the number of fillings using certain kind of ordering algorithm. So if you shuffle the equations and the variables, symmetric permutation, for example, of the matrix, then your non-zeros generated, the position will be different. And also the number of non-zeros, number of fillings generated will be different. So this step is called the, uh, the ordering algorithm. To get the best algorithm, you can show that it's MP complete, which requires an exponential uh, complexity algorithm. So people don't, don't usually do that. We use a number of heuristics to achieve this goal to get a, you know, close to optimal, to maximize, uh, maximize a certain criteria. Then the algorithm usually has a local uh, ordering, uh, local greedy heuristic, like uh, you heard a minimum degree ordering algorithm. And there's a global uh, heuristic like a graph partitioning Nancy dissection ordering algorithm. So these are, all the software for these categories are available, you, which you can use from the package. And another thing is uh, you want to, um, sometimes you want to design very good ordering algorithms so that you get to maximize your parallel efficiency, a degree of parallelism to expose as much as possible. So this is a very rich uh, research area. In terms of time, this usually, this doesn't involve any numerics. It's all graph man manipulation, integer operation. Usually it takes, uh, let's say, 10% of the time. And then once you fix the, the ordering, then you need another step to figure out where the non-zero, these red dots, occur. So that's something called the symbolic factorization. Again, this is just the integer operation, graph manip manipulation. So that's predict the filling positions. Uh, it's, uh, it's kind of uh, mimicking numerical factorization, but it's, uh, you can do some trick, uh, like uh, combine the super vertex, uh, et cetera, to get a very fast algorithm. It's all purely integer operation. It's about 10% uh, of time, depending on the matrices. And then once you get these two steps, uh, you know where the non-zero is in the LU factor. So you set up the data structure for LU matrix. Again, you have to use the compressed storage scheme. And in the end, you do the numerics, which is uh, LU decomposition and triangular solution. And in, this takes uh, a lot of time, very often 80% of, uh, of the time. Also, among these uh, two stages, triangular solve, it takes uh, much less time. The flops is also much lower order complexity. So the majority of the time is actually numerical factorization. That's why in the literature you see a lot of uh, architecture uh, performance optimization paper, it's all about uh, numerical factorization. One of the uh, advantages of, uh, you know, starting about uh, 10, 15 years ago, in most of the modern packages, uh, people start uh, using higher level um, blocking technique in the sparse matrix to find the blocks. So you can uh, use a higher level blast operation, use a level three blast. So this is something called a super node. So the, among the adjacent columns of the, in the L, U matrices, you try to find the structure, they are similar, so you group them together. Also in the graph representation, these four guys becomes a super vertex, so then you can do very fast uh, traversal, etc. So that's uh, something called a super node, and also in the 
multifrontal code, it's called the uh, front, the frontal matrix. So it's the same thing. You try to find a dense matrix. OK, so I'll give, give you some example of the performance uh, strong scaling for this uh, code. And here I show you several examples. You can see that the dimension varies, and also the sparsity varies. In this column, I show you the number of non-zeros per row. So it's the number of non-zeros divided by n. So it's roughly average number of non-zeros per row. For example, for this circuit simulation matrix we got from IBM, it's actually relatively dense. Each non-zero on average has over 4,000 um, now zeros for the matrix dimension is only 16,000. 16, so, but it's still a sparse matrix. Okay. But on the other hand, this matrix, if you look at the field ratio, field ratio is the size of LU versus the size of A. And this one doesn't feel at all. So it keeps the same. That's a good news for this one. But that matrix is electro. Oh, actually, what's this? This is from DNA analysis. And that one, you can see the field ratio could be like a 600, which is a huge, right? So the, the, the sparse matrix world is a very you know, diverse, the matrices. It's very difficult to say the performance of you know, your matrix, how, how it goes. It depends on a lot of this sparsity and also the field ratio. And then you can see that for these four matrices, for this one, the cage 13, this DNA one, it has a lot of feel. But on the, on the other hand, it has a very high arithmetic intensity versus the communication. So strong scaling is actually very good for factorization. We can still uh, speed up uh, even after 2,000 processors. But for some of them, it uh, stops at 5, 512. And then that's the triangular solution time. So you can see that. Uh, Again, the scaling is non-uniform depending on matrix. But in general, for example, for this guy, the triangular solution time is just one second, one, two seconds. But the factorization time is over, that's over 100. So it's, triangular solution is much quicker if you just do one triangular solution. So we have a GPU implementation. Uh, for we offload uh, some of the short complement update and then the GMM, big GMM, onto GPU. And the sh within each uh, elimination step, we ship back the thing combined with the CPU operation. So we get a speed up, a pretty nice speed up. The biggest advantage is we save, with this uh, algorithm change, we save a lot of memory, which is a very good news for direct solver, because direct solver takes a lot of memory. And then to use the GPU version, what you need to do is to set some environment variable. Also in the make file, you need to set some of the flags here. Then you can use the GPU. Currently, it's only supporting CUDA NVIDIA. And then we can see that the performance for this one matrix the, uh, with, without GPU, this is with the GPU on different uh, number of processors. So this is the uh, Oak Ridge Titan, the big uh, GPU cluster. Each node has uh, one Tesla GPU and with a 16 core AMD Optera. So you can see that uh, when the number of processors, the nodes we use is uh, fewer, then we get a lot of speed up from GPU. But then when we get to strong scaling, the, in this case, is uh, over, it's 512. So we get a speed up, get smaller, it's uh, only 30% speed up. It's mainly because right now the panel factorization, we left this uh, on CPU, and it becomes a bottleneck. So you see that the performance improvement for the red part is not significant. So that's future work. And we also have ILU interface, which you can take a look. We have examples how to use ILU as a preconditioner. And we maintain the super node for this version of ILU, so it's still very efficient. And we tested over 200 different test matrices. We got consistently faster than the scalar version earlier. That's the ILU TP algorithm before. So then for debugging performance, it's 
uh, this is similar also for strong pack. There are a number of parameters. So one of the things you want to check is if you understand your sparse matrix better, you can actually do better. For example, if your matrix is close to diagonal dominant, then you want some better ordering based on the graph of A plus A transpose, which we provide this facility, instead of doing pure non-symmetric graph based on A transpose A, which is too pessimistic. And then the, the, for this library, the big performance boost is from BLAS. So you need to make sure to have a good BLAS library. And another thing is perform, uh, a number of blocking parameters. Also for the GPU imp implementation, how large is the, depending on the transfer speed between CPU, GPU, how large is the training matrix we want to put on GPU. So these are a number of parameters, like five to six parameters, which can be tunable. And right now, it's exposed to you. You manually change to see how it goes. But currently, we're writing a big proposal uh, from DOE. So hopefully, we get the funding. We can do this uh, automatic uh, tuning with the uh, machine learning technique to help uh, automate this process. It will be much more user friendly for this aspect. And essentially, we built uh, the examples uh, so that uh, to, anticipate, to give you the uh, different uh, usage uh, scenario. So for example, the simplest is you solve one linear system. But very often in the nonlinear iteration, you need to solve uh, the system with the same A, but a different right-hand side. For example, when you do the preconditioning situation in nonlinear iteration, et cetera. And then you, sometimes uh, you, you need to solve the system with the same sparsity pattern. The, then you can reuse the ordering, the graph algorithms. You don't need to change every time because the graph is the same. So there are different. And then this example is very good, is to divide the processes into two subgroups so that uh, you know, the scenario I told you about this block Jacobi preconditioning, you can set up. This is an example to set up. And then we have a Fortran interface. We use the Fortran 90 module facility to basically mimic the, all the fu functionality there. OK, so let me spend uh, the last 10 minutes talking about this uh, new, we envision this to, uh, more like the preconditioning package. We call the structured matrix. In this case, it's not a 0, 1 structure. It's more numerical, low rank structure. So the overview package is we, uh, you can download also from our website. This the initial release was about a year ago. But uh, this uh, past year, we have improved quite a bit. So the latest, uh, actually yesterday, we just uploaded the, the sparse version 1.04, which has uh, you know, the best so far. And for this, uh, since we learned uh, from pre previous experience, so we directly just use the CMake build system. It's implemented in C++, uh, OpenMP, MPI. We haven't done the GPU, et cetera. And again, we have a real complex. We also have 64-bit uh, int integer support. When the matrix gets huge, this is important. Also for SuperU, we have 64-bit. And uh, recently, last month, we put this in PETC. So if you are a PETC user, you can use this, uh, access this either as a direct solver or preconditioner. So the input interface can be a dense matrix from, uh, for example, BEM or integral equations. Then you use the standard dense, uh, like scalar pack, 2D block cyclic layout. And also for the dense interface, we have a matrix-free version. So that means in many applications, you don't form the matrix. You have a bigger, you know, you, Forming the matrix is too expensive. So what we do is we just provide, use your matrix vector multiplication routine to do the randomized sampling in order to find the low rank internally in the factorization. So that's a very nice property. And then we have the sparse version, which uses the input is a distributed CSR format. It's a standard format. So it's two components here. And then the, uh, the build instruction, if you look at the readme, it looks uh, overwhelming. <laughs> but it's, uh, once you put this into a script, so it's actually very automatic. So you put this, uh, all this into a script. And the external libraries we need is uh, parameters or PTSCOTCH and the scalar pack. So you 
uh, build your those libraries in different uh, location, and then when you do the CMake, you just uh, for the each of these library, for example, for Parmetis, you just uh, point to the location that you build this uh, library. So that's uh, something pretty autom automatic. Then you make the example, and from PetC to use this, uh, you will configure PetC with uh, OpenMP with uh, CXX dialect. This is important. To, Specify C++ 11 since we used uh, this the some features from C++ 11, and then download the scalar pack, download the parameters, uh, PT Scotch. So that's how you configure, and then you set up the in your environment to set up the PetC directory. Then you do the make make this example 52. When you run this example, you can specify at command line either you want to use as a PC type LU. So that will use this as a direct solver, or you specify PC type ILU, that will use this uh, package as a preconditioner, as a very good uh, approximation, approximate factorization. The, a little bit uh, about the algorithm structure. So this, uh, currently our algorithm is based on this uh, hierarchically semi-separable matrix. It belongs to a big family of uh, uh, hierarchical matrix approximation algebra. It's the algebraic generalization to the fast multiple method. So in FMM, usually it depends on the Green's function so that you do the cutoff approximate, uh, throw away some of the terms which has a very non-local, far away interaction. But here, we look at this representation in the matrix form. So that means that the far away term corresponds to the off-diagonal block, and then they their interaction, their connection is weak. We can use a low rank approximation like truncated SVD to represent them. That's how you get the saving of the memory and also operations. There are a lot, lot of applications that can benefit this kind of hierarchical matrix representation. And the, uh, the matrix structure, the algorithm essentially using this uh, hierarchical setup. So you partition the matrix uh, using hierarchical way. So at the first, first level, you do a first level cut with off diagonal block uh, here, which has low rank, uh, you do something. And then looking at uh, this uh, diagonal block, you continue to see within this diagonal block, you have off diagonal block, block and then continue doing this. So then with this uh, hierarchical partitioning, you actually could get uh, this uh, binary tree it's for any of this kind of development conquer technique, you always have this binary, this kind of tree that really helps you to develop a parallelization, how to do the algorithm. And then from a compression point of view, the arithmetic point of view is off diagonal block, you do the SVD kind of representation, although we don't do SVD, we use a randomized sampling to help this. Then this off diagonal block use SVD. But the point, the main thing for low complexity of this algorithm is we use a nested basis. So this U3 is actually built based on the U1, U2, you already built at the lower level just to add on a small piece. So that's how you get a very fast uh, compression. Then the, for the sparse matrix, we can embed this technique. Remember in the sparse matrix, we have a lot of dense blocks. Essentially, we're doing this uh, HSS compression for the dense blocks internally. So then when the dense blocks become big towards the higher level of uh, separator tree, we apply this. But when dense blocks are small, we don't do this. We'll keep the regular dense matrix. So at here, for example, 100, 100, we'll keep it dense. But for higher level separator tree, we do this uh, HSS matrix. So that's how you save. And then in the examples, we also have a number of examples for either you read the matrix, of matrix market, for example, format, read the matrix from a file, then you can do this. And then the, uh, with the 64-bit uh, integer, this is an example. We use a template, C++ template, so it's very easy. It's just a one line to specify the uh, data, uh, data type. And uh, the, also the library is written in C++, but we have examples uh, for pure C users. We're still building the uh, Fortran interface. 
So just uh, a couple of uh, performance uh, um, result of this uh, package. So this is the uh, result of uh, dense interface. Here we look at the top level separator of uh, discretization of the Helmholtz equation. It's a sparse matrix, but if you look at the top level, the final uh, plane, which is a dense matrix, the, we vary the dimension of this problem. So it's a three dimensional problem. The K goes from five, 500 cube. And then the top level matrix is K square. So that's the weak scaling study with the MPI task up to 8,000. So you can see that the rank, the off diagonal rank, it grows relatively linearly with respect to the K, the one dimension of the three dimensional problem. And then we have speed up if over scalar pack if you do the pure LU. So the next chart showing is the preconditioning effect. We use this uh, strong pack in through pet C, then we compare this uh, low rank approximate factorization preconditioner versus a number of other preconditioner. For this is the one problem from a structural poroelastic uh, problem dimension is uh, 1.5 million. And then you can see that uh, this uh, strong pack gives uh, very strong preconditioner. It doesn't require many iterations. That's for a different uh, matrix. And strong pack is also very good in terms of uh, speeding up uh, iteration. And in this case, it's uh, similar to the block Jacobi plus uh, ILU3. That's one of the preconditioner in pet C. This GPU implementation that you showed, you showed an execution timeline. So why are you not overlapping the GPU uh, computations? Or is it not a timeline at all? It's already it's already overlapped. The problem there is not the GPU side; is the uh, panel factorization. So if you look at this cartoon I didn't show, it's the GPU side doing the operation, CPU side doing the operation. They are already overlapped. What is not uh, overlapped is the uh, uh, the panel factorization along the critical path. That part doesn't have enough uh, arithmetic. Right now, it happens on CPU. So we didn't uh, put that on GPU yet. That becomes the bottleneck. What default ordering it is using, like minimum degree or nested dissection? Uh, uh, the question is, uh, how does uh, minimum degree compare with the nested dissection? Nested dissection is a global, op uh, for certain 2D, 3D PDE problems, you can show it has uh, optimal property. So you get the best uh, possible. A minimum degree doesn't have this uh, uh, optimal uh, optimality property. But in practice, uh, uh, nested dissection works very well for le very large graphs. Minimum degree works well for small graph. So what uh, people usually do is uh, you do the nested dissection stop at a certain level. For example, stop at the graph of size uh, 500k. And then you do minimum degree internally. Then you combine the two ordering. Can I specify the ordering? Uh... Oh, yes, that's a good question. I didn't talk about that interface. So if you have an intelligent ordering interface, you just input to me. It's just a permutation vector. I will take your permutation vector. 